when people find out that I'm a pastor, they like to ask theological questions to see if they can stump me. Questions like, did Adam and Eve have a belly button? Who are the Nephilim of Genesis 6? Do you really believe Noah built a boat that could house all of those animals? And oftentimes, those questions are asked as distractions. They don't want to talk about more pressing, deeper, personal issues. But when it comes to Jesus, such distractions won't work. Welcome to Day by Day. John chapter 4, verses 19 through 22. Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshiped on this mountain, but you say that in Jerusalem is the place where people ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. So Jesus has just confronted this woman at the well with her own personal sin. She couldn't deny it, but she did change the subject from her own personal sin to a theological question, presumably to get Jesus out of her personal affairs. And Jesus goes down this path with her, but only to point out that she doesn't really know what she's talking about. He's not trying to embarrass her, but rather Jesus is pressing in on truth and the source of truth. Jesus is not claiming that his truth is right simply because he believes it to be so, but rather because God has revealed himself as the God of the Jews who would send his Messiah through the Jews. And it brings up a good question with which we all need to wrestle. Why do you believe what you believe? The woman was appealing to a heritage of belief. Our fathers worshiped on this mountain, but you say Jerusalem is the place where people ought to worship. In other words, how am I, dis how am I supposed to distinguish between true and false worship? Which is right? If I really believe something and am sincere in my worship, does that make it true? Well, no. Sincerity does not make something true. So how can Jesus speak so confidently when he says, we worship what we know? And how can you do the same thing as well? Well, we have verifiable revelation. God revealed himself to the Jewish prophets and priests and people through his word. God promised a Messiah in his word and God delivered. And this woman at the well was about to find out how close she was to the truth. And this was written so that you too could know truth and that God is gathering to himself people who worship him in spirit and in truth. Is that you? You won't be able to run away from the question or distract Jesus with your own questions. The best thing to do is to deal with the one who is speaking to you in his word. If you're a follower of Christ, I want to ask you to pray today for Sirapong Yaobang, one of our missionaries in Thailand. And to also remember the Garifuna Life Word broadcast that's heard throughout Belize, Guatemala, and Honduras.